I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan. Welcome back to Homebrew Review, and today we're going to talk about Infinity for Game Boy Color. Now, I believe this also works on Game Boy, but it is clearly designed with the Game Boy Color in mind. Now, when I first got the email from Incubate Games a few weeks ago about this title, there was a little bit of confusion out there over who exactly was developing Infinity whether it was the original dev team that started on it in 1999 or an entirely new dev team or some mixture of the two and various licensing and contract issues and minutia that you probably don't care about. But it stirred up a bit of a kerfuffle on the internet and I saw a couple of YouTubers whose names I won't mention because I like both of them got into a public tit for tat about it and I just thought at the time that I should wait and let some of that blow over before addressing the game and since then the people behind this project have put out a statement saying everything is kosher here we finished this game above board there was nothing backroom or backhanded about it so I'm just going to link to the Kickstarter in the description of this video and you can find out more details and go down that rabbit hole for yourself if you want to but to me it seems to be pretty legit it's already fully funded on Kickstarter anyway, so me mentioning this or putting the Kickstarter link in the description doesn't affect whether or not this game will come out. It's already developed, it's already backed, they're just going to put the polish on it and then release it in a physical form. So we're going to talk about the game and not any of those other things today. And it does look to be a very promising game based on this demo ROM that Incubate Games very courteously sent me for a review. So. Thank you to them for this review copy. If it's not final, it looks close enough to final that it's fully playable and I can get the full experience out of playing it here for you. Now the top-down display of this game should already look very familiar to most of you. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is the first game that draws to mind, but also it has similarities to Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, any of those classic games from the 90s when Japanese role-playing games really took the world by storm, or at least in North America, they made a major dent in the minds and hearts of video gamers, such as myself. And what you are finding in this game is a fairly typical plot for one of those role-playing games where two opposing forces are clashing. In this case, a malevolent king who has created an army to fight a war and a disgraced knight named Connor who wants nothing to do with the king or the war and blames the king for what happened to his wife Anna and holds a grudge for all this time. Their many years apart have not tempered his anger. They've actually, if anything, hardened his resolve and made him even more bitter. And that's where our game begins is the king sends his guards to summon Connor, and he is none too happy to see them. They keep addressing him as, Sir Connor, the king has requested your presence. He's like, there's no sir here. Leave me alone. I don't want anything to do with this. They don't really give him a choice, though. They immediately hit him with, Failure to obey a summons from the king is treason. So Connor, being a practical man and knowing he'd be dragged out of here in chains to the king anyway, or perhaps thrown in a dungeon for his insolence is like, fine, if it's going to be that way, if I have to get dragged out of here in chains or I can walk out under my own power, I'll walk. I'll go see the king. I don't really want to, but I'll find out what he wants. I'll talk to him. And that is the basic plot that you get going in. Along the way, you can do the usual RPG things. You can talk to people in the town by pressing the action button. You can go to the shop and buy equipment with this game's form of currency, which you can find a little bit of if you search your home. Like a very typical RPG, you've got to search everything that you see. Look in the pots, look in the chests, look in the drawers, go everywhere, touch everything, get the arm, get the healing items, get everything you need, then go and equip yourself with weapons, armor, potions, magic spells, anything you can afford with the amount of currency that you have. Although you're not going to be doing a lot of fighting early on in this game because you're basically just following it through to learn what the plot is. 
Like I said, you can interact, you can equip yourself, but the fighting comes a little later on. Unless you very purposefully go out in the woods outside of town and wander around instead of going straight to the castle. Because you can encounter random monster battles, but I really don't recommend doing that. I guess it's up to you. The game is not forcing you to follow a linear path, but don't you want to progress the plot? Don't you want to not get killed before you speak to the king and find out what he wants? That's what I'd recommend. Now getting back to the development of this game for just a moment, I just got another press release in the mail the other day that said, well congratulations backers, we've hit all our Kickstarter stretch goals, so now we're going to add something extra to this game. We're going to add a Game Boy Advanced Enhanced mode. So like the original Shantae for Game Boy Color from WayForward Games, they're going to put features into this game that will only show up if you put it into a Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Player. Hopefully that means they'll also work in a pocket, but I can't tell you that for sure because the game isn't even out yet and the analog pocket doesn't ship for another month if it ships on time. They had to delay it from May to October. There are obvious reasons for that. There are chip shortages everywhere for every manufacturer, but analog has been better than most when it comes to meeting their deadlines, even if they've had to postpone one, they usually come through on the next one, so I fully expect to receive my analog pocket next month, and I will be doing a review of it when it comes in. But, as I said, there's no way to confirm what the enhanced features are until the game comes out, and then I'll play them on a Game Boy Advance of some kind, whether it's a third-party one or the original, it'll just be whatever I have to do. Perhaps those features would even work in the Game Boy Player on GameCube, but that remains to be seen. Meeting the stretch goals also unlocked localized versions in Japanese and French, as well as a song added to the soundtrack by Yuzo Koshiro from Streets of Rage fame. I don't know which song in the game that is, the press release doesn't say, but I do enjoy the soundtrack as it exists here. It changes from city to castle to overworld, so there's a good variety here. It's not one song endlessly on a loop. And the plot is enough to get me invested in Infinity and want to play it further without having the whole thing laid out for me detail by detail. You know enough to get you going, but not the whole story. You don't really understand why the king betrayed Connor, why Connor feels betrayed, what really happened to Anna. You get hints from the cutscenes when you start the game up, but you don't get the full explanation, and you get the sense from what's going on here that a war is being engineered by one side or the other, and there may be greater forces at work than either of these two warring kingdoms know about. There may be an unseen hand pushing and pulling all of the pawns on the chessboard, and Connor and the king are both wrapped up in this larger malevolent evil that they don't even know about. And that is exactly what's going to draw you into a story like this. Like, it's not just the protagonist and the antagonist. There are greater things at stake here, perhaps the fate of the kingdom, multiple kingdoms, the whole world, who knows, maybe even the galaxy or the universe. I don't know how far this reaches, it's called infinity, so maybe it reaches to the infinite vastness of space. I'm going to suspect it's a little more grounded than that, but I never say never in these kind of games, because who would have expected the twists and turns of games like Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross before you played them for the first time. Now if you read a strategy guide or spoilers, you knew about all those twists and turns, but I tried to go into both of those games fully unaware. I didn't read all the spoilers ahead of time and I only looked up something if I absolutely got stuck and couldn't make any further progress in the game. Here we meet a mischievous man who calls himself the creator and his creations are these golems that serve the king that basically make up the brunt of his army. He doesn't even have to conscript various citizens of the kingdom to be his soldiers 
because these golems will do all the dirty work for him. The creator, who I would just as soon call the toy maker, because he refers to his creations as toys, he's not very good at keeping them in line because he tells you to play with his toys and one of them goes crazy and starts attacking you. So unless you did some random wandering outside of the castle or the city, this will be your first real battle when you play Infinity. And the battle system is pretty straightforward. Even if you haven't played role-playing games before, it shouldn't be hard to pick up on the fact that you get turns to attack, and in between turns you can either select items or spells or just do your turn in the battle and fight. You get to choose each round, and you also have the ability to move and select your target. There's nothing too out of the ordinary for it if you're already familiar with the tropes of these games, and even if you're not, I think you can pick it up rather quickly. One of the advantages of playing it on a system like Game Boy or Game Boy Color, or even the Game Boy Advance if you use the GBA Enhanced features, is that there's a limited number of buttons at your disposal. There's a D-pad, A and B, select and start. So they can't overly complicate things. They have a menu system that you can go into to equip items, check your status, heal yourself, and that sort of thing. But beyond that, it's not going to become overly burdensome. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a modern twin stick RPG where one is your movement and the other is the camera, and then you've got a wide variety of buttons that give you quick access to weapons and spells and to rotating party members. All of that's great, I'm not knocking it, but I do like the simplicity of a game like Infinity where you're able to jump in right away without really having to memorize a whole bunch of different things that you'll need to reference later on. So if you like a game that lets you jump into the deep water without having to worry about drowning, I think Infinity will meet your fix. And fans of 2D RPGs from the 90s, Link's Awakening and Secret of Mana, so on and so forth, will thoroughly enjoy this one. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend it based on the demo ROM that I've seen here. The final version may of course be different, so keep an eye on the Kickstarter page and all future developments as they are announced by Incubate Games. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan, this has been Homebrew Review, taking a look at Infinity for Game Boy Color. Like, share, subscribe, all of those things help the channel grow, and I'll see you next Wednesday with a brand new Homebrew Review, as well as new content every single day. Come back every day, there's always something new from Mr. Mega Man Fan. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you all again in a future video.